And, and what we found, as I said, was that initially the high blood pressure was, was associated with a high uric acid and was driven by the uric acid. But over time, the kidney took over and then you can lower the uric acid and the high blood pressure persisted. So what was interesting is that in humans, there's this uh, fair amount of data supporting that uric acid tends to be high with new onset hypertension. And especially, you know, and then over time, it can stay high or it can, it can come down to normal. Um, but, it, but basically, uh, we realized that if, if we we're going to look to see if uric acid was important in hypertension, we would want to begin with studying people who have new onset hypertension where it's not been so long that they start developing kidney damage. You probably know, you know, many, many years ago, pediatric hypertension was mainly a congenital problem, you know, uh, kidney damage or, Renal or uh, you're born with, you know, a single kidney or fibromuscular dysplasia. It was all what we call secondary hypertension. But as obesity started to increase, including in children, suddenly things like type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure started becoming more common in adolescents. So his clinic was filled with, with, with children, many of them who are overweight uh, and hypertensive, who had true primary hypertension. So I, I gave him a very simple question. I said, why don't you just go and look and measure the uric acid and see what it is? And he came back, uh, you know, a month or two later, and he showed me this graph and there was a direct relationship of uric acid with blood pressure in these adolescents. And what's more, it was tr only true in the primary hypertensive. So kids who had normal blood pressure had low uric acid. And if you had secondary hypertension, it, you may or may not have a high uric acid. But if you had primary hypertension, what we call essential hypertension, the hypertension associated with obesity, the uric acid was elevated. And uh, it was like 90% 90, 90 of these kids had high uric acids versus like less than 5% of the controls. So, uh, so Dan got this idea that he would actually do a randomized control trial to see if lowering uric acid could lower blood pressure. It was a double-blind, placebo-controlled crossover design where adolescents, you know, I think their average age was like 14 or 15, who had just been diagnosed with high blood pressure were randomized to allopurinol, and then there was a washout, or, or placebo, and then there was a washout, and then they took the other drug or pl placebo. So they, everybody got treated both with placebo or allopurinol at different times. And what he found was, it was unbelievable. The blood, these were kids who had never been treated with hypertension. They had, ne they had never received any medicine at all. These were uh, pharmacologically naive um, they, I mean, they, uh, you know, just had high blood pressure recently diagnosed and 90% of them responded, 88% responded to lowering of uric acid. When, if we lowered the uric acid under five, they became normal tensive. And in the placebo arm, only 5% or so responded. It was dramatic. It was like, oh my God, how, how could this be? Is, could uric acid be a cause of high so again. Uh, you, it's an interventional trial in humans. You give a drug that inhibits an enzyme that's involved in the production of uric acid from precursors, and lo and behold, uric acid level goes down and blood pressure goes down. How was that greeted by the mainstream when you published? I mean, it was viewed as quite exciting. In the pediatric literature, there, there was already some associations of uric acid with hypertension that had been a observed. Um, but, um, and of course, the association was well known in the adult, but you know, I, there was, I think there was a fair amount of pushback, but the study was so well dis done that it got into JAMA. And, um, you know, so it had a high, high visibility. And it has subsequently been uh, very, very highly cited.